My name is Dr. Matthew Tullifson. I'm a surgeon specializing in urologic oncology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Today I've been asked to speak to you a little bit about PSA screening. I'm sure that most of you have seen some of the controversy in the media recently regarding the pros and cons of PSA screening. And it's important to understand why PSA screening has been done, why it has been recommended, and why some experts are, are recommending against such screening. PSA screening was first developed in the late 80s and early 90s as a way to check patients for prostate cancer. At the time, prostate cancer was one of the leading causes of cancer death in men, and it was felt that using this simple blood test would increase the detection of this cancer and identify it at an earlier point, a point at which treatments would be more likely to cure patients of, of the disease. As time went on, PSA screening became more and more common. More patients were screened for prostate cancer using this blood test, and many more patients were diagnosed with prostate cancer. Through the years, this screening method, or this attempt to detect prostate cancer earlier, has enabled us to catch prostate cancer at a much earlier state. But some of the downsides with it are that many patients may have died with this prostate cancer and never knew that they needed any treatment at all. For example, if someone would have died of a heart attack before their prostate cancer would have been even diagnosed, the question then becomes, did we really help them by checking to see if they have prostate cancer or not? Recent studies have shown some conflicting results regarding the benefits and risks associated with PSA screening. In a large study based in the United States, that PSA screening was not associated with any decrease in the risk of prostate cancer death when people were followed for many years. However, in a slightly larger study based in Europe, screening at least once every four years was significantly associated with a decreased chance of getting metastatic prostate cancer and even dying of prostate cancer. The problem is that many patients have to be screened, many patients have to be treated for prostate cancer in order to find several patients that may have had their lives saved by this PSA screening. Current recommendations really run the spectrum based on which organization is asked the question. At Mayo Clinic, we recommend an individualized approach to screening for prostate cancer. There really isn't any one approach that's right for every patient. The data shows that PSA screening may decrease the risk of developing metastatic prostate cancer and may de decrease the risk of dying from prostate cancer. But for an individual patient, that outcome may be a decade or more in the future. So individual patients really need to weigh the risks and benefits of this screening and, and talk about them with their physician. One issue that's hard to separate from the PSA screening debate is what to do with the cancer once it's diagnosed. For example, in many patients, observation may be a very appropriate approach to manage this cancer. For example, in somebody that has a relatively low PSA and not very aggressive cancer on the biopsy, they may be best managed by simply observing the tumor and treating it if it becomes necessary down the road. Other patients may be better off served with radiation or even surgery to remove the prostate gland. At Mayo Clinic, we're fortunate to have these resources and some cutting edge and novel treatments that just aren't available at many other centers in the, in the country. So I would recommend that if you're a man, age 40 or higher, that you talk to your doctor about the risks and benefits of screening for prostate cancer using PSA. Your doctor should be able to give you an individualized recommendation, and you can certainly talk with them and see if this is the right step for you to take. I love to work at Mayo Clinic. At Mayo, we're blessed to have worldwide experts that can manage this cancer in many different ways, from surgery to radiation treatments to minimally invasive treatments such as cryotherapy, high-intensity focused ultrasound, and observation. It is through this collaboration between multiple doctors and multiple specialties that we can really develop cutting-edge care and improve the outcome for all the patients that we see.